So I did my research on uh, the ethics of human test subjects and why it's needed that a, a regulated and open uh, legal system of human testing is needed. First, I want to uh, basically talk about why human experimentation has some positives. Um, the first is it has great scientific advances. You can have great medical advances, such as finding potential cures, testing limits of human endurance with things like uh, pain, uh, physical uh, ability. Um, the weapons testing aspect is also um, positive, at least you can, in the sense that you can see the re direct results, um, as well as finding defenses for certain types of weapons. Um, but I, I say that cautiously. I think anybody should understand why. Uh, also, the pharmaceutical advances. You can um, see the direct results of different types of drugs um, and see the effectiveness of the medications and different uh, forms of treatment. Some of the dangers of human experimentation um, are uh, death, uh, deformation, uh, mutilation. Um, there's a danger of unethical abuse and just any type of injury that could occur from human experimentation since the results um, by definition are on a human being, a living human being. Um, I have this image is of the Harvard oxygen test. Nobody was really hurt with this, um, but it is, it, it is a, uh, Testing essentially, essentially what they're trying to do is is, is test the different types of um, reactions a passenger might have in a uh, plane. Their uh, point I would like to make is that there have been past mistakes with human experimentation, and um, some of these mistakes are, have been due to them being unregulated or unrestrained, um, as well as some of them, some of the types of experimentation that I'll be discussing shortly um, was extremely unethical and um, the treatment of their subjects was just cruel. Uh, this is also because they had a lack of informed consent. Uh, in, if, in fact, there was like zero concern for informed consent. There was a uh, um, a great deal of cruelty involved with some of these experiments um, and they involve deliberate mutilation uh, and injury and even death. This image is from Unit 731 which I will discuss in a, in a later slide in which they're testing a chemical weapon on a, uh, a, a child um, from China. To uh, continue with the past mistakes, I, I'm going to elaborate on Unit 731. Um, real quick review is Unit 731 was actually a part of the Imperial Army of Japan. Um, their specialty was weapons testing, um, but they, they're, the details of them are far more cruel. We have a great deal of... of uh, research available regarding this because the uh, 12,000 cases of uh, human test subjects we were given by General Ishii who led Unit 731. He was pardoned of all war crimes uh, in, in exchange for his um, research. So it is available in, in vivid and dark detail. Um, as I said, there was 12,000 cases. Uh, these cases were all on unwilling civilians and POWs. Um, it was, uh, as we stated before, primarily weapons testing, but that also went into medical experimentation and disease testing. They were known for routinely having done uh, vivisections on on their victims with um, 
no anesthetic while they were fully awake. Um, this chart over on the right, it actually, uh, it shows, these are, the chart is representing the documented cases. And Unit 731 between 1936 and 1945, uh, as it's stated here, has 12,000 uh, detailed accounts. And that that's only accounting for what is documented. The uh, National Socialists, which I'm about to uh, describe as well, <clears throat> their case load is uh, closer to 16,000. Uh, that's just the documented cases, and uh, it is believed that there is a far higher number uh, based off of survivor accounts and accusations. The uh, far right that is under National Socialism exactly uh, is basically the medical research, documented medical research that was judged by the Nuremberg trials to be criminal. And that reaches into the, uh, the uh, it's, it's, it's close to about 18,000. I think it's actually over 18,000. And again, those are just documented cases. So if we were going with what was undocumented or not 100% known, it, it is far higher. And to continue past mistakes, uh, as I said, I was about to discuss the Nazi SS. Now, with the Nazi SS alone, there is uh, 15,750 documented cases. Their, their research was a little bit more um, broad, as it involved eugenics and race hygiene research, uh, as well as weapons testing and medical experimentation. They also did drug testing. Um, an example of drug testing is the coagulation test, which they were testing a blood coagulant uh, as a pill, and they would have um, concentration camp uh, prisoners of all types, men, women, children, the elderly, the uh, everything. And um, they would have them take these uh, this pill and then they would shoot them in the neck or the chest to see how they bled. No anesthetic was provided. They also did vivisections and surgeries without anesthetic to see how the victims would bleed. Uh, I should say victims and slash test subjects, research subjects. Many survived. This is why we know that about this. Uh, this uh, another part of the coagulation test was removing bone marrow and and um, nerves and ligaments. Again, they did this without anesthetic. Um, several, several of these these victims did survive and testified at the Nuremberg trials regarding this. Another test was the seawater test, which was also done by the Nazi SS. This is uh, the the point of that test was to to find out. What would happen if one of their bomber pilots or their fighter pilots was shot down in the Arctic or in uh, the Baltic to essentially test the limits of human endurance in freezing cold water? The um, high altitude test, which is what this image is up here, you can see that the subject slash victim is wearing a prison outfit, a concentration camp outfit. And um, uniform, I should, I guess. And essentially, this was to test the rate of falling. So, if one of their pilots was shot down and fell rapidly from high altitudes, they would alter the uh, pressure in these pressure chambers. And the percentage of fatality was in the 90s. Um, very few survived this, and those that did were. And, deeply injured. So one of the positives that did come from these experiments is specifically those done by the Nazi SS uh, is something called the Nuremberg Code. The Nuremberg Code is the foundation of informed consent. It's based off of 10 principles that are designed to protect human test subjects. 
Um, it was formed from the verdict of what is known as the doctor's trials at Nuremberg. There was two specific cases that essentially were part of the judge's verdict that kind of formed the ten principles. These uh, principles uh, of the Nuremberg Code were adopted by 29 nations as a base for their human test subject clause. Um, nearly 100 nations do allow testing uh, with variations of the Nuremberg Code. Um, this chart over to the right actually shows the um, uh, amount of the countries, the number of countries that do have uh, legalized human testing, uh, those that have adopted the Nuremberg Code identically, and those that some so there's several nations, uh, if not there's more nations that actually do allow human experimentation on embryonic levels. Um, the uh, small dark or the small light blue is. Um, representing the nations of the world that have or still do have involuntary programs that are that allow for human test subjects as you can tell it's very small compared to the rest uh, the involuntary programs are very exceptional um, but it is still uh, it's, it's it's still scary uh, um, further elaboration on the Nuremberg code uh, what what exactly the principles are? It's uh, there, there, as I said, there's there are ten, um, ten principles, um, and they this is generally they are su subjects uh, control the experiments. Um, essentially, they have the ability to terminate or continue it at any point. Um, the subjects must have full knowledge of the experiment. Um, experiment cannot result in injury or death of subjects. Is this one is uh, a little bit interesting because you ca it can actually result in injury or death if the researcher is also willing to participate in the experiment and have it done to themselves. Uh, no deceit, fraud, coercion, or duress may be used to force subjects to participate in experiments, and subjects must uh, receive adequate treatment and aftercare, as that was a problem with several of the SS experiments. Is they, they, were, they received absolutely no aftercare, if any. Um, the Nuremberg Codes go into further detail about um, the essential, and ap it actually, the, the, the phrase used is absolutely necessary. Um, that the subject be giving their permission and it finds um, that all the experiment if it's something that is frightening it, like the researchers have to be fully able and willing to stop at any moment if if the subject finds any discomfort yeah, so essentially those were the those are the, the <clears throat> a, a, a breakdown of the reasons why it's very important that we have some legalized uh, and regulated form of human experimentation because when it's unrestrained and it's unregulated and when it's given a free hand th th that's when the, uh, the greatest cruelties occur and I really used Unit 731 and the SS as the main examples, but they are not the only examples. Um, the SS had more eugenical research, uh, but again, this was not limited to Germany and Japan. Um, even America had eugenical research uh, very questionable and unethical in the 30s and 20s. Um, Franz Boa was one that was extremely cautious of eugenics and human experimentation. Um, and I think we need to remember these past mistakes and understand that human experimentation does have positives, but it has to be done correctly. And if it's outlawed or prohibited, it might lead to further clandestine forms of human experimentation.
Thank you.